It's been 67 years since 14-year-old Emmett Till was tortured, murdered, and dumped in the Tallahatchie River, barbed wire around his neck, attached to a heavy cotton gin fan. His alleged crime, grabbing and flirting with a white woman, wasn't true. Now, could a long-forgotten arrest warrant achieve justice for Till's family? Plus, a memoir by the accuser has just been uncovered. New Zealand National Correspondent Tammy Eswick spoke with members of the family about the discovery. As we stand here, just outside of Minneapolis, the remnants of mistrust, hatred, and violence towards black people are never far from view. And for some people who grew up in the civil rights era, Emmett Till was their George Floyd, giving a face to racist oppression in America. It has been said, water always finds a way. No matter how you may block its path, the numerous times or even the barriers you use. Emmett Till's family is much the same. They've been through decades of failed federal and state investigations, deaths of admitted killers, and the comments of countless people who believe they should just give up. Unfazed and determined, Till's cousin, Deborah Watts, says they have powerful evidence and just need law enforcement officials to serve Carolyn Bryant her warrant. Carolyn Bryant is culpable in the kidnapping and the, the lynching of Emmett Lewis Till. The year was 1955. 14-year-old Till was visiting family in Mississippi when he encountered a white woman, Carolyn Bryant, at Bryant's grocery store. He did whistle, but whistling is not a, should not be a death sentence. What Emmett did not do which is what they've clarified also has made those sexual advances towards Carolyn Bryant. Carolyn Bryant's husband, Roy Bryant, and his brother, J.W. Milan, kidnapped, tortured, and lynched Till before tossing him into the Tallahatchie River. An all-white jury acquitted them, but they later admitted to the crime in a magazine interview. The federal government and state of Mississippi have opened investigations several times with no results. I say this not out of disrespect, but they have blood on their hands and they have an opportunity right now to make some decisions to carry out justice as they should have done in 1955. What we did not know until now is that back in 1955, the sheriff had a warrant for Carolyn Bryant's arrest for her alleged part in the kidnapping. We knew from the FBI reports that there was a warrant that was never served. The sheriff never served it because Bryant had two small children to care for. But knowing that the warrant was still out there somewhere, Watts and a team of people searched the dark basement underneath the LaFleur County Courthouse until a family member found this box. This box that was turned backwards and um, started reading and called Terry, my daughter Terry, over to read. And we thought, oh, wow, we, we found it. County Circuit Clerk Elmas Stockstill helped search. I was totally surprised because I use the example of looking for a needle in a haystack. Now that evidence is in a safe location and the current sheriff has a copy of the documents. I want the federal government, uh, local authorities to take uh, responsibility for, for what they can do today. And so we expect that weren't to be executed. And then we expect uh, the DA, Dwayne Richardson, to impanel a grand jury. And to and we hope uh, with that grand jury this time that there would be a conviction. Just this week, the Mississippi Center for Investigative Reporting unearthed a memoir by Carolyn Bryant, now known as Carolyn Donham, which raises new questions about her truthfulness. In 1955, she told investigators that Till was scared when the men brought him to the store to be identified. Her memoir reportedly describes him as unafraid and defiant, a description that makes the 14-year-old seem more sinister than she first described him. Carolyn Donham is still alive and reportedly living in North Carolina. The contradictions in her story, the unearth warrant, all adding to the new desire to see justice done. I'm hoping that those that um, were responsible for Emmett's murder are held accountable. It's a steep legal hill to climb. Statues of limitations have expired. Eyewitnesses have passed away. But the Till family 
isn't giving up. The Emmett Till Legacy Foundation, based in Minneapolis, run by Watts, advocates for legislation and policies to stop racially motivated violence. Minneapolis seems to be a hotbed for civil rights cases over the past decade, from Philando Castile to Dante Wright to George Floyd. As we have worked really hard to make that connection from the past to the present and the future, we don't want future Emmets. We don't want future Georges. Without hate or malice or vengeance, uh, without violence, we just want justice to prevail. Family members say for them, justice looks like correcting missed opportunities from the past. This warrant is the first step. Back to you.